gonna beat myself up, but I, I can't. You can hear it, can't you? Yeah. That's what Jim Croce, man. Every time I try to yeah. tell you the words, they come out wrong. So I have to say yeah, I love you. In a song. In a song. I knew I could hear it. One of the greatest songwriters ever, I think. Man, I love that dude. That dude and Cat Stevens just do it for me. Hey everybody, welcome back to Great Measures. My name is Richard, this is Judson. Great Measures. Uh, I think we have both been pretty vocal about our lack of familiarity with Soundgarden. Okay, yeah, sure. I can, I'll be more, I can say right now. I'm not very familiar with Soundgarden. We did a Soundgarden song, I think we did Slaves and Bulldozers. It's so awesome too. Yeah. So, I had never heard this song before until about two weeks ago, and I'll tell the quick story, but with my job that I have, you know, my, my purpose is to build relationships. It's basically a marketing job, but it's build relationships, be there when they have someone in need, they can call me and I can facilitate. Saving lives. Where this person goes for treatment, you know, whatever. Typically, specifically drug and alcohol treatment. With this job comes build, building these relationships. I use, you know, I'll, I'll, if somebody calls me and has somebody who needs to go to treatment or something, I'll go by and see them the next day and drop off cookies or drop off donuts or, hey, thanks for thinking of us, you know, whatever. Like, I treat people well if I can, you know. Mm -hmm. And one of my go-tos is crumble cookie. If you, if you know crumble cookie, you know crumble cookie. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the one in the Tupelo area I think that the which may or may not be where we are. I think that the employees control what they're listening to over the speakers. Like mm -hmm. I don't think it's a set station, and it's if they're not, they should be. Well, it's always something different when I go in there, and it's a little bit loud in there. the The walls are like it, there's a there's always an echo in there, but there's a speaker right over the the main register, and and I could hear this like really thick chugging type riff and I was like dude that it sounds so cool like what is that and I couldn't it was so loud and in, in, in the rest of the store in the rest of the, the building that I couldn't really pick up on what it was and then I hear this slight vocal come in and it's and I'm like that's Chris Cornell like you know that voice sure so I was like this has got to be Soundgarden but it didn't sound like anything from Soundgarden I had ever heard before like I said I'm not I don't go very deep into the Soundgarden realm of, of music, but I thought, well, maybe my phone can pick it up. And I pulled out the Shazam app and I hit it and it kind of stumbled for a little while. And then all of a sudden it pops up and it's this song called 4th of July. Um, I got it immediately got in the car, put it on. And I was like, I got to show this to Judson. Did you ask Bumble Fluff about it? No, I didn't. Because no, he didn't. knows. I've been chatting with, with, with Mr. Lawrence. Holla. Uh, but, uh, to the kingdom. But, I mean, you know, he knows that stuff. Did he, did I, he I assume he's going to appreciate this one. Did he recommend Bulldozer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was a request from him. So, there was an interview. This, this song came out in 94. It was on their Super Unknown album. The, the big Soundgarden album. Like, their, their big album. Biggest album. Uh... And he was talking about this song, Chris Cornell, with doing the interview, talking about this song in particular. And he says, one time I was on acid and there were voices 10 feet behind my head. Uh, the whole time I'd be walking, they'd be talking behind me. It actually made me feel good because I felt like I was with some people. At one point, I was looking back and I saw that one person was wearing a black shirt and jeans and the other person was wearing a red shirt. They were always there. It was kind of like a dream, though, where I'd wake up and I'd look and I'd focus once in a while and I'd realize there was no one there. And you'd think, oh, I'm hearing voices. Fourth of July is pretty much about that day. You wouldn't get that if you read it. It doesn't read like, woke up, dropped some acid, got into the car, and went to the Indian Reservation. But that's what the song is about, is his acid trip. I like that. It's such a, I, 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 let's just do it. I'm, All right. All right, this is Fourth of July by Soundgarden. Ready? I just realized you got a black shirt on and jeans, and I got a red shirt on. Man. <laughs> that was unintentional. <laughs> Proceed, Richard.
What do you what, so? What do you think, Richard? I I love it. Why? I don't know. I, I, What's the guitar player's name in this band? Uh, Kim. Kim. Yeah. Yeah. So, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go, I I I love 
the tone. He is one of my favorite guitar players. Okay. And I already knew this. Okay. Just because of how Soundgarden does their, what they do with the bass and then the guitar. It, there's this uneasy, when they when they go to that part where they're dong, dong, yeah. at the end of the phrase, it's hard to find where they are. Right. You know, um, and I have always, every time I've heard him play a lead, it's always interesting to me. I think that guy is, is so when you hear guitar players um, outside of what they're doing, uh, first of all, this song's riffy. Sound yeah, I, I, I love. The I riff. think that was the appeal. Yeah. Like I said, I'm I'm standing in this loud store, and I just hear that, dum, 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 and that's all I can hear, yeah. and I can just barely hear it, and I'm just like, what in God's name is that? Like well, it is awesome. Yeah, and that that pace, that that slow pacey, grungy. I don't even know. If, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, you yeah, have to say grunge. Yeah. yeah. But but there's a, there's sort of a there's still sort of a psychedelic sound in there. But I do it. I love that kind of pace. You I know? knew you would. I, I love you, it. Yeah. I love it. I knew and you and, would. and um, but his guitar playing. So you listen to some guitar players, and you you can know you can know what they're made up of. You can sort of say, well, I hear some Hendrix in here, or I hear some. So I, let me cut you off because. I know, I know I apologize for doing so, but when I first got in the car and I played this song and he went into that lead, that solo part, I heard, just based on tone alone of that guitar and, the, and that solo, I heard like a Hendrix, like a cream tone, you know, mm -hmm. like like the, the old cream songs, the old Hendrix, it, it had that tone and I was like, that's even more reason that Justin's gonna yeah. like this. Like, well, he, he, the notes he chooses to play are not are not are not do you see that it's a fly shoe fly <laughs> um i just want to make sure i mean we're listening to a song by lsd right yeah you're not um, tripping this a fly um uh, it's to me it's so when when i can't when when i'm singing along and i try to do that i try to i, I you know even if i'm watching a movie or or, or you know i try to uh, I'll I'll say they're fixing to say this, you yeah. Know, or, mm -hmm. or, and if I get it right, I'm kind of like, let's stop watching this. Shit. Sure, yeah. But I've with, with Soundgarden and especially Kim, I've never I've never been I never know what he's gonna do. Yeah. But it's not as if he's he's playing. I mean, it's not easy. I mean, he, it, that's that. I don't. I'm, I'm I'm not really saying. I'm not really giving my. Um, I'm not showing my appreciation for it as much as I, as I want to through my words right now, but because it's so innovative to me and not innovative in the way of saying he's breaking new ground on guitar, Yeah. but he's, but it's, I respect so much somebody that in a creative space, which this is, this is, they're not trying to be so technically, you know, they're not showing off how awesome they are at their instruments. I mean, the song is at a slow pace. Yeah. But I think that simplicity breeds such great creativity if you allow yourself. That guy's mind. I would love to sit around and talk to that dude. Just just because I, I think that that he is not he's as hard as it is, and this can go into the lyrical content too. But as hard as it is to be unbound in a straightforward beat, you know, a four piece band, uh, and to be able to to have freedom in those places, it's, it, you notice it. Yeah. You notice it when you hear it. Mm -hmm. And and all of them. I mean, the, the bass player, you know, they're all, the Soundgarden musically is, is I think, is so cool. And, and and then also Chris Cornell, obviously he's a, he's a great vocalist and everybody knows it. But whenever there is doubling of the vocals, the low yeah. and then you do the high, he he make I, I like that anyway. My thing is, and I've always kind of had this this idea or this mentality about it. You better get it right mm. if you're gonna do it. Yeah. And on this one, it was 
perfection. I like doubling vocals. I, I was watching this thing about how... Um, because you can do that, and you can butcher it. Yeah, but you can do it in different... So, I was watching, you know, Butch Biggis, mm -hmm. this producer that did uh, Nevermind. He did Nirvana's Nevermind. Okay, he yeah, was yeah. in the okay. band Garbage. Okay, gotcha. He did Siamese Dream. Gotcha. Uh, yep. I mean, this guy's... I, know. Uh, I know the name. I know the and, connection. There. And he was yeah. talking about doing the vocals on In Bloom. You know, mm -hmm. song in Bloom. Yeah. And he doubled the vocals on Kurt Cobain's uh, in the chorus. But then also he doubled Dave Grohl's vocal on his uh, harmony. Okay. And so, but they're singing on the same notes. Yeah. When you do an octave, and Chris Cornell can do two octaves. Yeah. Uh, but when he does it, he it sits so because he has that you know it's him when he sings up high yeah and you can know it's him when he sings down low too but but i don't know his vo his vocal melds like you say it it getting it right is is not really doesn't take effort it's it's just something that is yeah. or it isn't it just better fit yeah dave Grohl has the same kind of deal dave Grohl in Foo fighters will double his vocal high and low and it's and it's so it's yeah. really cool um, and I just remember the switch up song or I want to do with you anyway. Um, but so talking about being, being, binding yourself to a structure and trying to find freedom within the structure to express yourself and not be, not, not be so cookie cutter. Yeah. Um, Soundgarden does that well, but that's what the vocals are about or the lyrics, excuse me, the lyrics are about. I hear him, first of all, taking LSD and then going to a... a An Indian reservation. You're, yeah. you're already setting yourself up for yeah. some difficult thinking there. Um, that's where Jim Morrison lived, hmm. basically. He's out there still doing something. <laughs> and, uh, and I totally understand. I mean, I, I believe him because... That's the thing about taking LSD, especially when you get into a, you can think that everybody, when you hear everything that's being said around you, you think they're talking about you. You're, 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 you, you find yourself, in your mind, you find yourself bound. You find yourself trapped. And all it is, is, is you trying to figure out the way to get outside of, that's what LSD yeah. and hallucinogens do for you. Yeah. And, and why I'm an advocate of them, even now, I don't take them now. But I'm an advocate of them because uh, outside of the fact that it, it, there is an intoxicating effect, it does allow you, if you're able, to get there, to, to, to get outside your normal way of thinking. It breaks down these preconceived notions that, that have this programming that you've got. Yeah, and I, I, I agree with you. I think done in a secure, controlled location, c controlled environment, controlled everything, I think it... I think it can be healthy. Yeah, I'm talking no. about, like you say to be in control. I mean, but but I but I understand what you're saying. I meant like Safely. a medically supervised. Safe. Safely. Yeah, yeah. But um, and and he and I can only imagine that Fourth of July, unless he did it on the Fourth. Of, did he do this on the Fourth of July? I'm not sure. Unless he actually did it on that day. There's just an idea of independence. So. You're gaining independence, and that's what you're doing when you're taking hallucinogens. You're you're trying to gain independence from your old way of thinking, or trying to break into a new way of understanding of whatever it is. Whether it be you're looking at a leaf, or thinking about something deeper. I feel like that's, or it just rhymed. Mm. You know, it's it, it's a day that that this is a particular day that he's talking about. That that after this, because it even says in the beginning of the lyrics that he's he felt trapped. And then he, he realized that he wasn't, that he was in control. And that's a tough thing. When, when you're taking LSD, if you're conscious of this and you're not just, you're, and I'm not trying to, ha I'm not trying to make this a, a, an you're advertisement good. for LSD you're good. or hallucinogens, but it, it does aid you in, in getting rid of old way or seeing that there are new ways of thinking about things, whether or not you enter into them or not, the, the, the real, the real, a uh, positive step in it is realizing that there are. Yeah. 
and and it's always a fear fear thing fear based thing when you come to those realizations and it's because it always has to be about it's not as if you go into something and say I'm going to try to think differently about this thing that I've whether it be religion or or judgmental thing whatever it is I'm going to doubt I'm going to I'm going to try to go against my thinking on this well that's sort of a fool's errand if you go into it saying I I recognize this I'm going to try to think differently but it's always something that kicks you in the ass Mm -hmm. something you go oh wait a minute yeah um and I, and I was actually going down this this way of thinking the other day about being very grateful for uh, things things that occur to us. So and this might be a tangent, but I don't care. Go for it. Um, everybody has those moments when things occur to them, right? When you when you go, oh, like an aha moment, like, like a an light bulb a- moment, like an aha moment. I think I think people are I think I need to be way more grateful that the, that those moments even happen mm-hmm. because if you really think about what those moments are they're generally out of nowhere they're triggered by something else but but it could be something completely different from what it is the triggering can be mm-hmm. completely different from what it is you're going aha about. but it, it in a in a in an instant in a moment you you gain complete insight about yeah. something that that seems to come from an external somehow externally i mean and then you just go oh yeah that moment just that little moment is huge mm-hmm. it's a huge thing and 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 really that's what that's what gaining insight whether you're tripping to do it or or just in regular life that's a big deal i didn't mention roman candles i mean obviously it's there's obviously if you're going to be tripping, you're going to be seeing things, you're going to colors and whatever. I mean, fireworks going on. But um, but that moment of aha, that that the occurrence, the the when something occurs to you, that's a huge gift. I think. I think that's a a, a that people just go, oh, that just occurred to me, and then they just go on. But from that moment on, they now have this other understanding they never had before. Yeah. And it's not just a small thing. It's usually a huge thing, but it's so fleeting and so quick and comes at you. It seems as though it comes to you yeah. rather than you working yourself to it. But anyway, that sort of goes to what I was talking about, at least musically, from what Kim does in Soundgarden. What I think Soundgarden does as a whole Put them. They're put their 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 category of music. You go to a ter- certain category to find them, but what they do musically stretches outside of that. It yeah. it they're the. It's like they have these occurrences in the music. Whenever he plays a note, whenever he's doing specifically, you know, the guitar player for me, and even Chris Cornell with his vocal stylings, you just go. You know, it's different, and, and you have to sign it up under their name. Yeah. You know, that they're not like, I mean, down in a hole is one of the lyrics in there, which is a, that's an Alice in Chains thing. Right? I mean, they're, 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 they're grungy. They're yeah. in the grunge, but, but everything they do is sound garden. And I don't know, I think I'm starting to understand them more and I'm going to listen more to them because I never did. I was, I was in the Pearl Jam camp and that's, 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 that's there you go. There's the problem with you get. You, you get bound by things yeah. and you don't look outside of those things yeah. and that, that I'm guilty of it too yeah and I mean that's just something that I think is beautiful and I'm grateful about in life is when you you know that's what at least what I think I should we should all be working on is putting ourselves in the atmosphere or, or, or tooling ourselves and our formula and fine tuning things to where we end up where, where, where we have these receptors that are just going out so that when those things happen, we can recognize them quickly and take them in and make them part of our whole algorithm, you know, our living algorithm. Yeah, I was, I was hesitant in the beginning of this video to even admit that this was the first time I, you know, the other day was the first time I'd heard this song. Right. Because it's such a... The album came up 30 years ago. It's such a massive album, right? too. Right, 30 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, it's such a huge album, and it's just not an album that I've ever started and gone front to, to you know, beginning to end with it. And I, I was hesitant to admit it, but I'm also not ashamed of it because it's just, it's just how it happened. It's just how life sure. played out, and I'm glad I heard it when I heard it. 
And I'm glad I had the ability to the the opportunity to show it to you because I, the, you were the first person I thought of when I when I heard it. I was like, I got to do this on the channel. Yeah, Soundgarden is is strangely relevant. It's not nostalgic to go back and listen to them mm. to me. You know? Yeah. They have something that is is still marching across the time, and that and that's what I keep saying. You know, if you go sadly in a way, no, I love Nirvana's music. But when you listen to it, 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 it it's, puts you back it's there. It's that era. Soundgarden yeah. is not. And it yeah. may be because we're listening to it now in our lives, but I don't, yeah. I don't really think so. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I mean, RIP Chris Cornell, but, but, and I'm saying that because he's passed away. So everything you're listening to him, it is going to be from the past because he is now mm -hmm. not, not, not on this plane of existence. But, but Soundgarden. I don't think it's because we're hearing it now. Right. I think there's something about their music that. Yeah. And and I get there through the guitar playing. I think the guitar playing is. There's something else. There's yeah. something else in there, yeah. dude. He's got some. He's got some. some yeah. You magic. You, you kind of touched on it earlier, where you were talking about how it's, it's. You listen to it and you're like, man, that's it's so simple what he's doing, but even the the intricacies and the the when he decides to play yeah, and and when he bends yeah and how much he bends yeah yeah, yeah. Like it's just I, I don't know man it, when i heard that i was like i've never i i just remember like, like i said i'm going back to that day in particular a couple weeks ago but I'm, i got in my car i went to it hit play and i, I didn't even drive off yet i just kind of sat there mm. you know and i was just like this is so different and it's so Simple sounding, but it's so different. I mean, even to the the how low they've got the guitars tuned and the bass tuned, and I mean everything is tuned so low, and it's and and I you know obviously I'm attracted to it because of that, because of how low it is, and because of the distortion, and because of that chug sound like that. That's my wheelhouse, you know. But it's not. It's being unfamiliar with. Soundgarden on a larger scale and and not being deeper into their catalog and, and their backlog of, of music. I don't know, you know, obviously I know Black Hole Sun and, and a couple of others, but like my perception of Soundgarden completely got flipped on its head when I'm sitting yeah, in Yeah, Black Hole Sun it. is what, what you think about Soundgarden if you don't listen to them a lot. Right. Now that's my least favorite song by them, that I've heard. It <laughs> yeah. is. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I mean, it's a good song, don't get me wrong, but 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 this other stuff? Yeah. It's just, it's cool, man. And, and you know, I'm going to start kind of going more into the Soundgarden. It goes and, and beyond. Let, you know, if, if somebody out there is a, a huge yeah. Soundgarden fan, please let us know. Like, it goes what's, be, what are we, what are, what's the next song that it we It goes do? beyond just their style. That, at least what I'm hearing is you, I feel like the conversation can go further than that sounds like Soundgarden. That's just, yeah. it, it, it goes beyond a stylistic conversation because you have to go deeper into the conversation about the notes that they're choosing to play, the, the vocal stylings that he's choosing, the how the song is put together with the forum and the subject matter, all of it. It seems as though it goes beyond just their stylistic play. It, it seems like they're tapping in, there's, there's something else. Yeah. And there's even, this might sound weird and it might not make sense, but the low tune guitars, the heavier distortion, the palm muting, the, the chugging is very modern. Mm -hmm. But that solo, like I said, has a cream Hendrix, even the tone, even the style of playing it, so there's this contrast of like 60s rock and this thick, heavy, grungy, riffy, chuggy, I don't know, all these words together. And it's just this contrast of this old school sounding solo on top of this modern riffing. Modern riffing that's still going on. Yeah, and it was just it's just a cool contrast that that fits obviously. It it, it makes sense that he They're did. They're tapping it. into whatever the thing is that flows through all of this that we're saying. Yeah. Most people stop in that flow and, and break off and say hey, we're going to do this right yeah. here. Or we're going to do this and this is the point in time we're going to stay. Soundgarden didn't do that. Right. It sounds like they just That's why you're hearing forever ago and then right. and then on and I guess. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. 
I'm I'm in this, I'm I'm with it, dude. Okay. Okay. Cool. I'm I want, glad you like I want that to meet one. Meet this guitar player. I, <laughs> I mean, it's just just to talk to somebody. What what words would he say to you? Mm-hmm. You know, if he's able to talk to you like that, at yeah. least from my ears, to me in particular, I'm, yeah. I'm 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 intrigued at every yeah every turn that he takes. Yeah. It's crazy, man. I don't know if he'd have time for our tiny little channel to come do an interview with us. But come on! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. That was Fourth of July by Soundgarden from 1994's Super Unknown. We are Great Measures. My name is Richard. This is Judson. Great Measures. Have a wonderful day, everybody.